Hi everyone, I'm Holly and today I'm going to read you one of my short stories. It's from my Treasury of Animal Stories book and it's called The Strangest Sleepover and it's about a very gorgeous dachshund. Now I grew up with a lovely dachshund called Max. Um, he was an absolutely lovely dog, very, very, very badly behaved. Um, I once took him to dog training classes and he did a wee all over the radiator in the church hall where the dog training classes were. So um, I really love Daxons. I have such good memories of, of Max being very, very funny. So, the strangest sleepover. But I don't want to share my bedroom. Izzy glared crossly at her mum, her fingernails digging into her palms. Her Daxon puppy, Trixie, gave her a worried look. She didn't like it when Izzy was upset. Her ears flattened down and she tucked her tail between her legs, glancing between Izzy and the safety of her basket. She wasn't sure which to run to. Izzy gulped, trying not to cry, and made herself speak in a calmer voice. It's okay, Trixie. Shh, I didn't mean to scare you. Trixie scuttled towards her and nuzzled gratefully at Izzy's hands. Izzy, I don't see why this is such a problem. Her mum was staring at her, frowning in a confused sort of way. You like Charlie? You got on really well, her dad put in, nodding. Yes, for one day at Auntie Cat's wedding. That's not the same as having her in my bedroom for two weeks. Izzy shook her head. How could they possibly think she'd be happy about it? She had got on well with her cousin Charlie when they'd been bridesmaids together. It had been fun having someone her own age to giggle with during all the boring speeches. The cousins lived so far apart, they'd only met a couple of times before, and Izzy hadn't really remembered Charlie. It had felt like meeting someone new. Izzy had even camped in Charlie's room at the hotel, like a sleepover. But this was different. Charlie's mum, her Aunt Lucy, was going on a training course for work, and Charlie was coming to stay with them. Her stuff will be all over the place, she muttered. She knew it sounded a bit feeble, but she couldn't explain it any better. Her room was just for her, and Trixie, of course. Izzy had only had her puppy for two months, but she could hardly remember what it was like not having a dog. Trixie had a smart new basket in the kitchen, which she used for daytime naps. Mum said she spent most of her life asleep, but Izzy was sure that Trixie was tired all the time because her legs were so short. She walked about three times as many steps as everybody else did, trotting along to keep up. But at night, Trixie slept on a blanket spread over the end of Izzy's bed. Izzy had learned not to wriggle about in the night after the time she was woken up at midnight by a panicked little yelp as Trixie fell off the end of the bed. Anyway, Charlie might not like animals, she pointed out. She might not want to share a room with me and Trixie. Her mum and dad exchanged glances and Izzy stared at them suspiciously. What? What is it? Well, we were going to suggest that Trixie slept in the kitchen just while Charlie's staying with us. She actually doesn't like dogs, Izzy asked disgustedly. No, Izzy's dad shook his head. I think Charlie's very fond of animals. That's the problem, you see. She's bringing Sammy with her. Izzy frowned. Sammy? Did Charlie have a dog too? Or maybe Sammy was a cat? Is Charlie bringing a cat? She asked, frowning worriedly. Trixie really wasn't going to like that. Or rather, she would like it. A lot too much. It would be two weeks of war. Uh, no. Mum gave a little shiver and made a face. Actually... Sammy's a rat, Dad explained. I think Charlie got him about the same time you got Trixie. And it's a bit difficult to find a pet sitter for a rat, apparently. So, while Charlie's staying with us, Sammy's going to have to come too. Izzy's mum shook her head. Aunt Lucy suggested we keep him in the kitchen. Izzy giggled, even though she was cross. Her mum was not good with mice and rats, or spiders, or snakes. You could keep him on the counter. Don't, Izzy, her mum shuddered. I know it's stupid and they're lovely pets, really, but I just couldn't. Or the living room. I'm afraid he'll have to go in your room. But 
you like rats, don't you? Izzy sighed. It was true that she'd always liked looking at the rats in the pet shop. She loved animals and she'd been desperate for any sort of pet. She loved the rat's sparkling eyes and she didn't mind their pink tails the way Mum did. But that didn't mean she wanted to share a room with one. Hi, Izzy, this is so exciting. Charlie came racing up the path to the front door with Aunt Lucy hurrying behind her. Izzy tried to smile and look pleased to see them. Mum had explained to her that it wasn't fair on Charlie to sulk. Charlie didn't have much choice about having to spend two weeks of her summer holiday away from her mum and all her friends. Izzy had reluctantly decided that was true, and she'd promised she'd try to be nice. Oh, Izzy, is this your dog? You're so lucky, she's gorgeous. Charlie crouched down to admire Trixie, who was peering round Izzy's ankles. What's her name? Trixie, Izzy admitted, feeling a bit better about her cousin. Now she obviously had good taste in dogs. She's beautiful, Charlie breathed, holding out her hand for Trixie to sniff. Trixie licked the girl's fingers and sniffed at her thoughtfully. She smelled like Izzy, somehow, and her voice was like Izzy's too, soft and friendly. You're so lucky having a dog, Charlie said giggling as Trixie's tongue tickled her fingers. I can't have one. Mum's out at work and I'm at school, so a dog would get really lonely. I've got Sammy instead, though, and he's fab. Did my mum tell you about him? Izzy nodded. Your rat? Is he in the car? Yes, the cage is on the back seat. I think he's a bit confused. He's hiding in his sleeping pod. He's been sticking his nose out every so often when we stop at lights, but then we start moving again and he pops back inside. Charlie patted Trixie and stood up. I'll get him. Can you help me carry his cage out of the car? Sammy's massive cage was taking up most of the back seat. As far as Izzy could see, though, it was completely empty of rat. She couldn't even see him in his bedroom. Thanks for letting me keep him in your room, Charlie said, as they edged the cage up the stairs between the pair of them. You're sure you don't mind? She peered down over the top of the cage at Izzy and saw her frown. Oh, you do mind. Izzy tried to smile and say it was fine, but it didn't work very well and Charlie was looking hurt. Look, let's just get to the top of the stairs before we drop it, Izzy muttered, pushing the cage a little so that Charlie had to stumble up another step. This is my room. I cleared the stuff off my desk. Because Mum made me, she didn't add. We can put his cage there. Charlie gently let go of the cage and peered in, looking for Sammy. But he was still hiding in his bedroom after the bumpy ride up the stairs. What's the matter? she asked, turning to Izzy. Don't you like rats? Your mum doesn't, I can tell, even though she's pretending Sammy's OK. They're really friendly, you know, if you keep handling them, and they don't smell, not if you clean out the cage properly. Oh, no, it isn't that. I think they're cute. It's just weird having someone sharing my room, Izzy blurted out. She could have kicked herself when she saw the hurt look on Charlie's face. I mean, it'll be fun, she added quickly. It's just that I'll miss Trixie. She's got to sleep downstairs because Sammy's going to be in here. Oh, Charlie's face fell even further. I suppose she might try and chase Sammy. I didn't think about that. Sorry, she added in a very small voice. All at once, Izzy discovered that she wasn't cross anymore. All the things her mum and dad had been saying about how this was much harder for Charlie than it was for her made sense, and she felt mean. Her bedroom didn't matter all that much, not when Charlie looked so miserable and lonely. And she'd make it up to Trixie somehow. Extra treats, super long walks. Charlie could come too. It's fine, she said quickly, giving Charlie a hug. I was just being stupid. Oh, look, is that him? A black nose was sticking out of the sleeping pod. A black nose and a set of immensely long black whiskers. The two girls held their breath and after a few seconds, the rest of Sammy appeared. Glittering eyes, sleek black and white fur and that long, strong tail. Gosh, he's bigger than I thought he would be. I know, and he's still only young, Charlie said proudly. 
I think he's going to be massive when he's fully grown. Do you want to meet him properly? He can be a teensy bit shy with new people, but if you feed him some apple, he'll love you forever. Shall I get an apple from downstairs? Izzy suggested, hopefully. There was a scurry of paws on the landing, and the two girls gasped. Trixie! She's followed us! Oh, it takes her ages to get up the stairs. They're huge steps for her because her legs are still so little. Izzy dived to the door and grabbed Trixie just as she popped her head round. Sorry, sweetie, you can't come in. Trixie wriggled in her arms, wondering what the strange new smell was. Not another dog, she was sure, but something. And in Izzy's room, her room, she sniffed, confused but curious, and wriggled even harder. I'd better take her downstairs, Izzy said, sighing and carrying Trixie over to the door. I'll put her in my kitchen and come back up with some apple, OK? Are you all right? Izzy whispered to Charlie later that night. Her cousin was sleeping on a fold-out sleepover bed, squished up next to hers. It was almost dark in her bedroom now, and Sammy seemed to have gone to sleep at last. He'd been pottering around his cage, rustling his bedding and nibbling his seed mix. It had all sounded oddly loud to Izzy, who was only used to the gentle breathing of a dog. It had been a fun day. After they'd waved off Aunt Lucy, they'd taken Trixie for a walk. Because there were two of them, Mum had actually let them go without her. She'd lent Izzy her phone just in case and spent about ten minutes getting them to promise to be sensible and not cross any roads, while Trixie jumped up and down and tried to chew her lead to bits. They'd gone all through the woods, giggling and racing Trixie, and it had been fab. Then Trixie had collapsed in her basket, so they'd gossiped and played with Sammy upstairs. But somehow, towards bedtime, both girls had grown quieter. Izzy was worrying about Trixie and whether she'd be miserable downstairs on her own, and she guessed Charlie was feeling homesick. Mm, I'm OK, but Charlie didn't sound very sure. Are you missing your mum? A bit, Charlie snuffled, and Izzy wondered if she was trying not to cry. She'd looked a bit teary when Aunt Lucy had driven away that morning. Do you want me to get my mum? she suggested doubtfully. No, Izzy heard Charlie gulp. Can I get Sammy out and cuddle him? she whispered. He's very good. He won't poo on your floor or anything like that. Sometimes I let him sleep in a shoebox on the corner of my bed. Izzy hesitated. She wasn't totally sure about a free-range rat in her bedroom. But Charlie sounded really upset. All right, she muttered. But you won't let him climb on my bed, will you? I mean, I do love him, but... Promise, Charlie agreed gratefully. She got up and opened the cage, hooking out a warm, sleepy ball of fur. Izzy could just see her snuggling Sammy up against her neck. Sighing, she turned over and buried her face on her pillow. She missed feeling Trixie snuggled up next to her feet, even though it was nice to be able to wriggle about. Trixie had been so confused when Izzy went to say goodnight to her just before bed. She'd sat in her basket, staring after them as they closed the kitchen door, and then she'd whined for ages. Izzy guessed she must be asleep now. She was quiet anyway. But Trixie wasn't asleep. She didn't understand why Izzy had left her in the kitchen, and she had no intention of staying there. She belonged in Izzy's room, whatever else was up there. Ever since Izzy's mum and dad had gone up to bed, Trixie had been pacing backwards and forwards in front of the door, trying to find a way to follow Izzy upstairs. She sniffed grumpily at the crack around the kitchen door and nudged at it with her nose. She'd never been able to open it before, but Izzy's dad hadn't pulled it tightly closed and now it moved just very slightly. Trixie's tail stuck out straight behind her, quivering with excitement. It had definitely moved. Cautiously, Trixie hooked her polished black claws into the space between the door and the frame and pulled, skittering out of the way as the door swung slowly open. She was free. Upstairs, Izzy twitched and sighed and fell more deeply asleep, and Charlie wriggled and rolled over with a little snore. She nuzzled into her pillow, and Sammy, forgotten, slipped out from under her chin 
and buried himself in a nest-like hollow further down her duvet. Then he stared towards the door, whiskers twitching nervously. He could hear scrabbling and panting dog breaths and the thump of a solid little body heaving itself up step after step. He backed away a little, huddling against Charlie as footsteps pattered along the landing. And then a pointed muzzle peered curiously round the door and came sniffing and snuffling towards him. Sammy let out a worried squeak. Trixie trotted up to the sleeping bag and sniffed again. She could see something soft and furry moving in the shadows and she still wasn't quite sure about the smell. But Izzy was fast asleep in the bed. Trixie could hear her deep, slow breathing. The other girl definitely reminded her of Izzy and she didn't mind this small, furry creature. She was stroking it in her sleep, her hand cupped around its back. Trixie sighed wearily. It had been very hard getting up the stairs and she definitely couldn't climb up onto Izzy's bed. Izzy usually lifted her. So she'd have to make do with just being close to Izzy. She'd sleep with the girl who smelled a bit like her and the furry thing, which was still watching her cautiously. Trixie climbed onto the sleeping bag and gave it a friendly sniff. Sammy let his whiskers droop a little and sniffed back. Charlie kept wriggling in her sleep and the dog was curling up nicely further towards the end of the sleeping bag. The dog looked warm and comfortable to curl up with. He pattered down the sleeping bag to Trixie and nuzzled hopefully at her nose. The puppy stared at him in surprise, but she was too sleepy to complain. If Izzy wanted the rat thing in her room, that was up to her. She wriggled herself round a small ball of fur protectively and went to sleep. And that was how Izzy and Charlie found them when they woke up the next morning. A smooth ball of dachshund curled up asleep behind Charlie's knees with a bright-eyed, whiskery face peeping out over her back. Charlie, Izzy whispered, leaning down from her bed and gently shaking her cousin's shoulder. Charlie, look! Charlie yawned and wriggled out of her sleeping bag a bit and looked down where Izzy was pointing. What? Oh! They've made friends. They had a sleepover, Izzy told her with a smile. Just like us. So I loved writing that story because it made me think of Max um, and just how much I love Dachshunds generally. Actually, when I was growing up, I really wanted to have a pet rat. Uh, but my mum was convinced that they would smell too much. And also, just like um, Izzy's mum, she was really not very keen on their long pink tails. Uh, one of, maybe one of these days I'll, um, I'll persuade the rest of my family to let me have a rat. But I've got three cats at the moment, so I'm not sure they'd be very keen. Thanks so much for listening. See you again soon. Bye.